Hi, this is Susan Atkinson from SJA Art Studio. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, I have some great tips and tricks for you in watercolor. And what we're going to do is we are going to show two different ways to paint steam off of a coffee cup. And this could work for steam off of other things. I'm just a couple strokes into this. I've grabbed my biggest brush and I've mixed up some brownish tan colored paint. And I just wanted a little bit different color than what this coffee cup is. Since the coffee cup is bluish, I want something to offset it a bit. So I thought this uh, tan color would be nice and neutral. And I'm going to, as quick as I can, come through here. I can't forget that little area in the center of the handle to show that background. So I can come back, come back and do the bottom portion of it later. I'm going to go right up to this, but not over it. Plenty of water here on my brush. I got a nice big flat wash brush, and it carries a very um, sharp edge to it which is very helpful in this kind of quick painting. Again, catching the edge of that. Getting some color into that background, very wet background. Okay, going right up to that steam area. Using the side of that brush. Okay, I'm switching brushes here, guys. Uh, what brush is that? What number? What I is it? am using a oval-shaped squirrel brush, and I think it's like a synthetic squirrel, actually. You think or you know? Well, let's see here. <laughs> I think from what I remember. Okay, so Some this is well, the brush. Sure. Um, da Vinci makes a really nice uh, synthetic squirrel brush, and it could be a blend as well. Um, so, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run out of time here. No, you're, it's coming together really nice. Okay. So, we see that this is all white, but we really don't want it to be all completely white. So, I'm just taking water on my brush, that's all. And I'm coming up. I'm coming up against those lines that I painted to. And it's important to do this while that paint is still wet up to there. Otherwise, you're going to be fighting with a very hard edge. Okay. So. That's a start. We got the pathway laid. And in this way, in this particular case, I just kind of painted around it. Um... I didn't want to actually use masking fluid to take care of that area, and I know that is another way to go ahead and and uh, do things. I'm trying to mix up kind of a grayish color here um, because I want this just slightly different than what we got going. I am taking the edge of that. Coming around with some gray, just kind of swoopy lines back and forth. Kind of get an idea. You can bring in some other colors too. You can bring in like a slight purplish, a little bit of brownish color in the background. You can bring some water back in there. You do want to leave some white in there. And don't forget your little swirl. But again, remember, this color is just a very, very light. Lots of water. Want it light. You want to make sure that you keep some of the white in there. You can switch brushes back and forth. What is that brush? This is going to be a red sable brush. Number? 
Um, this is a very small brush. This has, happens to be a number three. Sure. And if you want some more defined lines, you can come back and you, you do that with your uh, smaller brush. You're dialing down a little bit more. Catch some of that background color back in there. And uh, we got some nice swirly smoke happening in there. I don't want that line to be too hard, so I'm just coming back with some water. So very important as you're doing this to um, just make sure that you're using quite a bit of water in that process. I like what's happening here. It kind of gives the illusion that there's some smoky stuff happening here. Um, if a person wanted to, they can come back with their brush. They can maybe use their bigger brush. <laughs> and add some more color to the background. Okay, now why would, why would I want to do that? What I'm trying to do here by adding more color into the background is I'm trying to just make sure that that smoke and that steam stands out more. So by making the background just a little bit darker, I'm able to achieve that goal. It's okay that it looks a little bit like, shall we say, coffee stained. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm laughing at my own jokes here. Even if they're not that funny. So what are these other two coffee cups we see on your left? Okay, so let's show you what's happening with those. Okay, I'm going to leave this. You have a pretty good idea of um, how to go ahead and handle that. And uh, I think I got that probably a little bit too yellow. So if that ever happens, what are you using, just a napkin? Don't or? panic, just use a little bit of paper towel. Thanks for the question. Just use a little bit of paper towel, switch your color back, and if you still don't like it, lift it up again. All right, that looks fine. Okay, so you get an idea that there's some steam happening there, um, and I'll come back and I'll probably add some more dark color to the bottom of it. So that's... Okay, so let's take that line out again. That's what we're looking at. Yes, um, there are many different tools a person can use. They can, so if you run into this problem. Yes, if you run into this problem, you just grab one of your little scrubby brushes. You can go ahead and scrub that out. Um, just go ahead and lift it like that, and you'll and be all set to go. All right. So that was a nice lesson in how to fix something that you might not want. All right, now on this one, what I'm going to do, so you see these coffee cups are similar but different. Mm, all right. They're different in color. They're different in design on the front. They're different in the way that the um, reflection is hitting it. All three of these are just a little bit different from each other. In color or design. So this one, um, same deal, but what I'm going to do, again, we've prepared these coffee cups, is I want to make this background darker yet. I'm going to paint right over it. The reason I'm going to do that is because in this case, I actually did put masking fluid on there. I put it on in a swirly direction. I painted half of the 
um, background at the bottom of it, of this painting. And when I brought it up, I made it uh, kind of modeled right here so that it gave it a good stopping point because this is all completely dry. Normally I wouldn't do that. Normally I would just keep going. Um, but in this case now, um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to bring in some strong color if I can. So I'm going to go ahead and see what I can find in my palette. What are you going to use for color? <laughs> I don't know, but um, it should be interesting. <laughs> okay, so I got some reds here. I think I want to bring some reds in, although they keep turning like a purple color. So we'll see. There's a nice brown. Maybe I'll add some of that something in that, with the red. Something that looks different from your last background? Yes. Okay. I wanted to do something quite different. Okay. And so here we go. I'm going to just, in this case, paint right over the top. And then I'm going to come back. And I'll blot some of that out. But the idea is oh. when, when a person is doing this, you want to go ahead and use some different colors. Don't keep just the same color going because um, you want to add some interest. And so grab a couple different colors in your palette. Maybe some of it's purple. Maybe some of it's blue. You know, um, like that. Maybe you'll have a different color up in the corner than you'll have coming down. And the idea is that, honestly, you may have to come back and do more than one pass. You might just have to. Because with watercolor, when you're painting loose like this, um, these are going to initially dry much lighter, okay? I'm uh, trying to be a little bit more cautious around the edge. And um, you can see the very sharp edge. So we'll just bring this around, keep my sharp edge on there. I'm right over the top of this. It's I'm now masking fluid again. Yeah, that is masking fluid on there. Oh, you can paint right over it. Okay. And um, I can paint right over it, but here's here's the what's going to happen. Even though I can paint right over it, and I just did that for quickness, actually. And I'm trying to be a little bit cautious around. Around the edge of this coffee cup, keeping that sharp line as good as I can. Okay, so we got a nice sharp line there, and we got a nice, um, I, I like the looks of the background right now. What are you doing? Are you blending that right there? Or? I'm just, yes. I'm guessing. I'm a total Yes. <laughs> no, you're doing good. <laughs> Excellent questions, and I appreciate that. Okay, so now we still have this. This would turn out pretty harsh if we didn't do something with that. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of my brushes. Boy, I could grab almost any one that I want to. Um, I'm not sure. What'd you grab? Uh, I grabbed a flat brush, and I'm going to see how this what works. Is there a number? or? Is um, a this is a three-quarters inch. This one's a three-quarter inch. Okay, sure. Yeah. So the reason I grabbed this one is I know it's a pretty stiff brush. And check this out. You can just apply a little bit of pressure and then you dip your brush back in your water. So your brush is damp, it's not totally wet, 
And you're going to end up lifting up this paint. Uh, really got to get close to kind of see it start happening. And I'll get a little of it over here. So this is a lifting technique that works pretty well if you're wanting to do some steam. Is that what you guys call a pro tip or no? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I wouldn't have known this when I first started watercolor, so it would have been great for somebody to show me this. <laughs> um, I took a few classes when I first started and I did learn a lot from books, but I think um, I'm switching brushes here. So I went with a smaller flat brush just because this one, it because it's smaller, it's gonna tend to be even yet a little bit stiffer. So look at how much it is picking up. See what I'm talking about? Look at how much it picked up that paint. That works great. Okay, so what's gonna happen is I'm, I'm gonna allow this to dry. And when I allow this to dry, it, and it's got to be completely, absolutely dry before you can remove the masking fluid. And if you've never removed masking fluid before, um, you can use tape to do it. Or you can do uh, what's called a rubber cement pickup. Some people like to use... How are you going to do it? Um, you just rub it off. But your painting has to be completely dry. So what's going to happen is you're going to see this nice wispy effect of this steam. And that's the beauty of watercolor and um, working with a very dark background to go ahead and lift paint. And it gives a very soft effect, like a very steamy effect. So a little bit different um, than... If you're doing this way, where you're coming in with the background, and of course you're wanting to keep this a whole lot lighter. Um, in this case, you get to just paint over the whole thing and then lift the paint um, what about for that a top very, one? very fun effect. Um, this top painting mm -hmm. is very similar to this first one that I did. Okay. Whereas I came in with the background, and it's a very light background, almost white. But there's just enough of a difference to tell that there's white in there and that there's an illusion of smoke coming up off of the coffee cup. All right, guys, so my painting's dry, and I just wanted to do a little update here. Now that it's dry and I removed my masking fluid, and there were these uh, very bright areas, I just want to let you know um, a good idea, and what I found very helpful is to go in and grab my little scrubby brush. You can see this is really quite well used now. Some of the paint's coming right off the scrubby brush. That happens, but always... With the paper dry, your scrubby brush wet, just go in next to those very, very sharp lines and just go ahead and um, scrub, that, scrub that paint right off of there. Soften those lines so that they're not so harsh um, right next to it. And, uh, and especially with that dark background, it should be fairly easy. Yeah, yeah, you have to apply a little bit of pressure at least, though. But that'll help give you that nice uh, softer line. 
and uh, it'll help bring that all together for you. Um, and you can try a couple different size scrubby brushes. Whatever works for you in that area is what you're going to want to do. And so... What about these and... Um, send that one if it's ready? Yeah. It um, maybe. Okay. So this one's dry. Um, I kind of was okay with what's going on there. I like that. That's going to stay. I'll come back and I'll pick up this edge a little bit. And um, what do you have to do to pick up the edge? Blend that mean? in. Okay, so what I will do is I will either take a very small brush and add some more color in there and bring that in and let that dry. That's one way to do it. Or I could um, grab my scrubby and get rid of that hard line because um, that, as you see here, is kind of a deterrent. It is dragging your eye right to that. So if I grab my little tiny scrubby and I just ever so gently scrub that out, uh -huh. I can uh, fix that area. And uh, then it kind of looks like the light is coming right into that area, which is just, that's fine. Um, and this area too, because I see that paint overlapped and that can happen sometimes when you're working on a watercolor paint, painting, it'll go sometimes where you don't want it to. You just come back, pick up those areas, finish it off. Ooh. And then of course, don't forget, you throw your signature on it, which is what I'm doing right here. Thanks so much. Keep painting!